talks are so short, we hardly have time for questions. So uh, I told some of the uh, later speakers to speak faster. <laughs> <laughs> The presentations are really so interesting. The calculations of the models and the uh, clusters is really uh, advances being made. And uh, this is a topic all in itself, not just of catalysis of surface science. So there are, those of you who will be up at the poster session will be plenty of time to talk and discuss and ask questions. The next uh, presentation comes principally from Carnegie Mellon University as well as NDA National Labs. Arvind of Gestadia will be our next speaker and uh, he will be talking on surface relaxations and dynamics of naturally chiral platinum surfaces. I've changed the topic slightly. I'm going to be talking about thermal fluctuations in the structure of, uh, in the step structure of naturally chiral platinum surfaces. And uh, before I start, I'd like to first uh, acknowledge the support we had for this project. We received funding from NSF and the Department of Energy, and received computing and uh, the Pittsburgh Supercomputer Center. The reason we're interested in chiral surfaces is because of the unique way they interact with chiral molecules. Chiral molecules have non-superimposable mirror image forms called enantiomers. And these enantiomers have the same physical properties, such as melting point and molecular weight. And they really differ from each other only when they interact with other chiral objects. Because of this, they can have dramatically different biological properties. An example of this is thalidomide. One enantiomer, attenuates uh, morning sickness in pregnant woman. The other causes birth defects. Because of this, um, drugs made from chiral molecules have strict regulations to be produced in pure enantiomeric form. Unfortunately, Synthesis of these molecules in a non-chiral environment produces 50-50 ratios of these enantiomers. And separating them is difficult because, as I mentioned, the physical properties are exactly the same. So one attractive alternative is enantiospecific heterogeneous catalysis. And uh, this will allow for the selective production of just one enantiomer that you desire. And uh, several groups have worked on this, and uh, there have been some reported successes. But uh, the systems have been so complex that they haven't been able to get a fundamental understanding of the process. Our group looks at a much more easily characterizable system, and we study chiral molecules absorbing on naturally, naturally chiral surfaces. So what am I showing you here? Uh, this is an example of a chiral surface. And the figure on the, the surface on the left is obtained by cutting an FCC crystal along the 643 Miller index plane. And this creates, uh, the, this forms steps and kink structures in a periodic uh, a lattice structure. And uh, you can get the mirror image on this side by cutting along the negative six, negative four, negative three Miller index plane. And I'm gonna perform a demonstration to try to convince you that these two surfaces cannot be superimposed. So imagine I remove all the atoms and just leave the, the step kink structure there. I would then get the, this following figure. <coughs> I'm going to take this structure and try to superimpose it on this side. As you can see in that quick demonstration, that any kind of uh, rotation transformation I attempt I still won't be able to superimpose the two surfaces. And by definition, this means that the surfaces are chiral. Now, the example I've given you has asymmetric kinks, but in actuality, it's been proven that any step structure with kinks is indeed chiral. Now, if you're not convinced by that demonstration, uh, there's more direct evidence. And uh, I listed uh, several experimental results uh, from two groups. One, Andy Gilman's group at Carnegie Mellon University and other from Gary Attard at Cardiff University. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail about these experiments, but the main point is that they show that these surfaces indeed discriminate moving the enantiomers. Our group has uh, been doing theoretical work in this area, and we concentrate on studying adsorption of chiral cycloalkanes on um, uh, chiral platinum surfaces. And I'm not going to go into uh, detail about this. The, 
Um, this will be the main topic of the next talk by my colleague, Finn Power. What I'm going to concentrate on is uh, what's the actual surface structure like. Is to be able to characterize these systems, we have to know what the surface looks like. So for the rest of this talk, I'm going to concentrate on finding the surfaces. These are obtained by cutting uh, visinal to the 111 plane. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm interested in what this, uh, the structure on the surface looks like. And one complexity that's removed is these surfaces do not reconstruct. So we don't have to worry about that. So when uh, they're prepared by cutting along the Miller index plane, uh, there's a formation of two types of steps shown here in this uh, figure. And they're labeled A and B. And they differ in their orientation of the top layers with the bottom layers. So cutting along different Miller index, high Miller index planes gives you different uh, A and B length structures. So all the figures I've shown you right now, up to this point, show periodic uh, king structures like this. But it's established that these step structures actually change because of thermal roughening. Because uh, atoms on this uh, step structure can diffuse because of thermal energy. And uh, a lot of people have done work on step roughening, and it's been well established that uh, steps start to become wavy at finite temperatures. And this is a, an example of shown in the schematic diagram. The dashed line is a straight step uh, at temperature equal to zero Kelvin. And at any finite temperature, the step starts to become wavy due to this roughening effect. And uh, the figure on the right is an STM image of a monatomic step on silicon 001 to convince you that this actually happens in real life. You can see that the step becomes wavy. So the main uh, objective of my uh, this presentation is to answer the question of how does step roughening affect power surfaces? <coughs> what happens to these king step structures? Now we're interested in um, obtaining a detailed quantitative description of the step structures, and to do this we need to know the energy barriers that the atoms uh, hop on the surface. And by this schematic diagram here, you can see that there are many different types of hopping moves and diffusion moves that the atoms can uh, perform on the surface. So we first need to identify the ones that we're interested in and then be able to actually get accurate uh, predictions of their values. And uh, this is difficult to do experimentally. And one attractive alternative is density functional theory, which is the first principles method, which allows you to accurately calculate these energy barriers. And uh, to demonstrate this, I put up two energy barriers that can be compared with DFT and experimental results. And these energy barriers are obtained experimentally. They're shown in parentheses, and they're obtained by FIN experiments. And you can see the first one is hopping on a terrace, which would be similar to this process. And uh, it's DFT predicts 0.29, and experiment predicts 0.25. And hopping along the beast step would be similar to this process. And uh, DFT predicts 0.9, and uh, experimentally predicts 0.84. So this shows that DFT does give accurate values for platinum surfaces. And uh, I should also note that these are much more accurate than other semi-empirical methods that are easier computationally. And uh, we've been able to calculate 18 unique diffusion barriers along the step king structure on platinum 111. And, uh, and here's an example of uh, a set of calculations, results from a set of calculations we've done. And these are uh, diffusion barriers along an A-type step. And uh, the gray shaded atoms are the step, natural step structure. And this is one atom diffusing along the step edge. And you can see it can move from sites that are called step sites next to the step, and then move through a corner site, which is the least coordinated, and into a king site, which is the most coordinated. And the uh, parallel potential energy in the surface is shown here. And uh, you can see that it mirrors what you expect uh, from the uh, nearest neighbor arguments, but that the, you can't pre predict quantitatively these values from simple nearest, simple bond mm -hmm. boundary methods. So given that uh, we have energy barriers, um, we can create a lattice gas model to try to sim uh, simulate the uh, surface roughening. And uh, I've just listed some of the main assumptions in our simulations. And the first is that we only allow periphery diffusion. And this means we only allow atoms to diffuse along the step edge, and atoms cannot break away from the step and move on to other steps. And uh, there are several good uh, reasons for this. And uh, experiments, the first is experiments have shown that periphery diffusion is the dominant mechanism up to 800 Kelvin for a platinum system. 
And I'll get into more uh, detail about these experiments later. But DFT calculations also indicate that the barrier to diffuse away from the step is much higher than diffusing along the step. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have 18 barriers along the step, but this is still not enough information to capture all the different environments you can encounter when the step starts to roughen. So we have to develop a correlation function that can predict the energy barrier on of any diffusion along the step, and this is fitted to the 18 known barriers that we have. And uh, the functional form of this uh, correlation function is uh, mimicking the hops that are characterized by going from energy minima through the transition state. So given that we have the energy barriers to any type of move along the step, we can then simulate the dynamics by using kinetic Monte Carlo. And uh, in particular, we use an algorithm called the n-fold wave. So before I discuss what we can get out of these simulations as far as they relate to Carl uh, surfaces, I want to briefly compare our DFT uh, model to actual results that have been done for straight steps. And uh, to do that, I want to introduce this function which is used to quantify surface roughness in both theoretical and experimental work. And uh, this is called the temporal step correlation function, and it just is the mean standard deviation between the step at some certain time t as it with respect to a time uh, t0. And this is shown in this diagram here as uh, the step at t equals zero is a straight step and it defines the y-axis. And as the step starts to wander, you can measure the distance between the two steps and it's given by the variable x. Now this function uh, g has been studied both, as I said, theoretically and experimentally, and it's been established that for periphery diffusion, it obeys a time uh, parallel with respect to time, and the scaling exponent is given as one fourth. And also, we can study the temperature dependence of this function in our Arrhenius equation, and if uh, we can obtain values for g at different temperatures, we can extract this value of uh, E effective. And this has been done by experiments that I referred to earlier by Eason, and uh, they, the first point to make is they observe one uh, quarter as the, the scaling component up to uh, 800 Kelvin. And they also were able to extract the value for E effective, and they get a value of 0.5 plus or minus 0.04. And uh, one key point to note is they don't see a difference between A and B straight steps, and I'll get back to this in a moment. So uh, I should note that E effective is some combination of a lot of different energy barriers along that an atom sees diffusing along the step structure. And a theoretical framework has been developed to be able to uh, find the value of D effective if you have a potential energy surface. And we've applied this and we have changed from DFT um, E effective values for A steps of 0.61 and for B steps values of 0.52. The first thing to notice is this, these values are in the, in, the ball, uh, ball, in the ballpark of the 0.5 plus or minus 0.04 that these have obtained. But uh, one stark difference is that we actually see a difference between A and B steps. And this conflict is interesting because other experiments done on platinum 111 island morphology indicate that there should be a difference. And the other DFT calculations on step and kink formation energy also indicate that there should be a difference between A and B steps. So, um, Recent communication we had with Geese and her co-workers indicate that in their experiments they might have failed to properly identify A and B steps, and that might be the reason why they didn't see a difference. And it would be interesting to see these experiments be done and see how this conflict gets resolved. But the main conclusion is that our uh, DFT-based model can accurately predict surface roughness parameters. So now we can move on to our main interest, which is uh, what is the effect on chiral surfaces because of thermal roughening? And uh, the plot on the left is a log log plot of G versus time. And uh, these are the kind of plots you see experimentally. And the first thing to note is uh, we also see an exponent of around 0.25 as you would expect for periphery diffusion. But the more interesting thing is the, the time scale that we're able to simulate these systems. And it's on the order of several hours. So we can simulate this system to relevant time scales of the experiment. And uh, here's a, a picture from the simulation of platinum 874 after two hours at 450 Kelvin. And you can see the black line is the initial step structure, which is periodic. And you can see the dotted red line is the 
the step structure after roughening. The point I would make here is that the step structure does change uh, substantially from the original step profile. While those qualitative pictures are nice, um, we would actually need some kind of quantitative information to indicate what the change is is uh, thermal roughening. And uh, we can find that by looking at uh, step length distributions. So we can ask that if we uh, want to see if, uh, given a length L, uh, what's the probability of seeing a step uh, of that type? And uh, these simulations are for, again, 854 at uh, temperature of 500 Kelvin. And I plotted uh, two different time periods, six minutes and uh, one hour after roughening. And I plotted both A and B distributions. And I'll concentrate on the B step here. And uh, there's actually two lines at this point, And these are the two lines that are associated with time equals six minutes and time equals one hour. We can see that they lie on top of each other within the energy, uh, energy. I mean, within the error bars, and this indicates that the system is equilibrated as far as the heat structure. And uh, another thing we know is that we observe substantial deviation from the ideal structure. So if this was at time equals zero, the B step for an 854 should be all, all the all the steps should be at one, so it's 100% one, and the A step should be 100% at length three. And we can see that there is a substantial deviation. So we've been able to do these simulations for other step structures and observe similar properties. Now, as far as uh, relating to kind of, as far as relating to studying how Karamo and his adsorb on this surface, we're interested in how they interact with kinks. And uh, this figure shows a plot from a simulation done by my colleague Tim Power. Uh, which shows the adsorption of one two dimethyl cyclohexane on platinum 874. And you can see this molecule interacts with the kink structure right here. And that's the key as far as what are the types of kink structures you see after thermal roughening, because this is where the, the, uh, the interactions are occurring. And this shows the results from one simulation where the initial step structure has length 3, B, and length 1A. And you can, there's two main points to take away from here is that there's a substantial difference in distribution, again, of the types of kink structures you see. And you also see non-Miller index uh, kink structures over here, and there's a substantial amount of them. But one main point is you do not see uh, kink structures that are mirror images of the original uh, kink structures that you see in the original step profile. And this shows that the net chirality of the surface is retained despite surface roughening. Often people argue that surface roughening will remove or smear off this chirality, but it shows that the chirality is indeed retained. So finally, to wrap up, I'll just mention uh, some of the future work that we're going to be starting on. The first is uh, to look at lead patterns in these simulated surfaces, so that uh, the external people, before they start the experiment, they take a lead pattern, and afterwards, we can check if our lead patterns are similar to theirs. And then, most importantly, we want to combine the information that uh, other people in the group have worked on trying to generate, uh, trying to characterize specific molecules interacting with specific kink structures and combine the kink distributions we can get from these simulations to get a more accurate picture uh, of this process. And with that, uh, I think the, the presentation I'm willing to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks. Thank you, Ivan. We do have time for a question.
or very high temperatures. And that's not what they do experimentally as far as. Okay, thank you. Our next presentation.